What's happening? There's some, uh, there's some axioms in music that you should be really, really, uh, immediate with, you know? Um, and I think so much of, I, I had mentioned this in a recent video, so much of being really good at music or doing music is puzzle solving in the moment. Um, it's hard to come up with, I mean, I feel like that's, that's so much of the process of doing music on a gig. Let's say just, I mean, really super random example. I'm on this note, a chord's coming up. Should I stay on this note? Whatever this is, C sharp. Uh, I should pick a guitar that's got fret markers, but I'm on a C sharp and here comes a, uh, uh, whatever, uh, B flat minor seven chord, right? Can I stay on this, right? And I need to know, uh, first of all, the inharmonic spelling there is probably a bad example. I'm on D flat and a B flat. What did I say, major seven? Yeah, <coughs> B flat major seven is coming up. Um, can I stay on it? Well, I need to know that, you know? One of the ways I would know that is uh, to know all the notes in every chord. Right? I mean, literally, if somebody said E flat major seven, I could say E flat G, B flat D, right? If somebody said G minor 11, I would say G, F, uh, or in order G, B flat D, F, and then you could spell out the, the extensions if you want, but it's really, it, it's A, A and C, but uh, it's really important to believe it or not. You would think this wouldn't be that important, but it's a very helpful thing to uh, to know all the notes in every single chord, at least up to the seventh chords. Um, seems unnecessary. You know, who got me to do, uh, so at Ole Miss in the mid nineties, the University of Mississippi, that's where I started college before. I ended up transferring to uh, University of North Texas to do jazz, but I did a couple of years at the University of Mississippi and, um, and I, I was a, uh, I was actually a political science major, but if you looked at my my transcript, you'd say, "Oh, this is a music major, right?" I was on an orchestra scholarship for violin, which don't don't read too much into that. I I was not a great violinist. But... I did a lot of uh, a lot of classical work back then, um, not on guitar, uh, and uh, but I did all the music theory classes in addition to the orchestra stuff at Ole Miss. And, uh, and uh, uh, I had a teacher named Lardella Folks Levy who made an enormous difference in my life, uh, partly just because she uh, made sure I was a killing machine at everything, right? That, that um, things that I thought, so to take, let, let me just take an example. Um, knowing the notes in every chord that I thought, well, I could reason my way to it fairly quickly, or I could imagine a guitar and, and picture it, you know, it, it, uh, things like that, where I, my initial reaction was, why do I need to be able to do that? Why would I, why should I devote the time to utter instantaneous memorization? Uh, and it turns out she was right. It turns out that, that being extremely fast with certain inf information is a great puzzle solving tool. And puzzle solving is a big part of being good at music and especially being able to, able to make decisions very quickly, right? So uh, I figured this video could be about some of the axioms that you should just, you should be instantaneous with, right? Um, uh, an obvious one, B and C, E and F. B and C, E and F. You should know the significance of B and C, E and F. This is but probably not for this group, right? That's probably a foregone conclusion. But um, B and C, E and F are where the half steps are in the note names, right? I mean, that's that's a that's obviously a really big deal. That's a big that's an axiom on which uh, based on which you will make a million musical decisions. You know, you'll calculate what certain notes are, what what it is you're looking at, where a given note is. 
based on knowing B and C, you know, B and C, you know, B and C, you know. So you should know that instantly. Another one though, and this one's arguably more important, at least for people who aren't just, people who do what it is that we do, you know? Uh, as, as creative guitar players, as non-classical players, essentially, where you're not just playing scripts all the time, um, uh, is uh, seven, uh, three and four, seven and one. Three and four, seven and one. Three and four, seven and one. That's where the half steps are in a scale or in a chord, right? So if I have uh, just any old chord, uh, look, G major seven, real basic, right? Root seven, three, five, right? If I know this is a seven, then I know this is a root. Then I know this is a six because seven and six aren't together, right? The note in between them is flat seven or hypothetically it's sharp six, but you'll never hear the term sharp six. So, so seven, flat seven, right? But seven and one are together. Seven and six are not. Three, here's a three, that means that's a two. That means that's a four, right? Five, that means that's six and four. Five, six, seven. Everything's a whole step except for three and four, seven and one. And the same goes for scales. You know, if I'm playing a minor scale, this is a flat three. We wouldn't call that a three because three would have to be here because two and three are not together. Three and four are. So let... Three and four, seven and one. Replay any of you who think of who think of the the major scale as whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's that's a crap way of thinking of it. Think three and four, seven and one. Everything's a whole step apart. All numbers are a whole step apart. And all consecutive. I'll get I'll get uh, thorough here. All any two consecutive numbers are a whole step apart, except for three and four, seven and one. Uh, that's a that's a really big one. Um, one that we talked about recently. Uh, so axiom one, we're saying is uh, B and C, E and F, right? You should just know that instantly. Axiom two, uh, uh, three and four, seven and one. Three and four, seven and one. Three and four are a half step apart. Seven and one are a half step apart. All other consecutive numbers are whole steps apart. Um, uh, uh, another one is one we talked about recently, which is the chords in a key, what extension should they take? Um, the, uh, uh, and we talked about how one chord, back to, let's just say we're in the key of G. One chord takes a regular nine, a regular four of, or 11, and a regular six or 13. Remember, two is nine, four is 11, six is 13. They are the same notes. It, there, it doesn't matter what octave they're in. So two is a nine. Though the chord name C2 and the chord name C9, those are two different chords. Uh, so at, in chord names, two and nine mean different things, but as notes, they're the exact same thing. So a nine is a two anywhere. It doesn't matter what octave, right? You could have it way down low. Um, by the way, you know, if, if you listen to an orchestra, in any group, because this is based on physics, this is a tangent here. Sit at a piano, if you know piano. Play, play kind of a, close voicing, right? Something that's, you know, let's say you, you just take three whole steps in a row, right? So uh, it's hard to do on guitar. Or, sorry. Got a voicing like that. And you're playing them all together. If you play it in the middle of the piano, it sounds pretty all right, you know? You, uh, something that close, you have to be a little careful, but, you know, like if you just bang it, bang at it, maybe it's not as... Interesting. Uh, the room can affect things. The sound of the piano can affect things. Having, you know, a really muddy piano may not sound that great with those close voicings. That goes for your, your guitar, too. You know, really muddy tone, you can't really get away with, with, uh, with really complex stuff as well. Um, play in the middle of the piano, that probably sounds pretty good. As you go up higher, it starts sounding worse. You know, and at the the very high end of the piano, that those three those whole steps that are together, you really can't tell what the notes are as well anymore. It's just a harsh uh, bunch jumble of notes, right? Go down low, and it's a complete catastrophe. Play the those three notes together down low, and it's it's a complete wreck. A great thing to remember about music. This isn't a proper. I'm not going to put it put it in axiomatic form here. 
but it's a good thing to remember about music is that generally uh, in the lower registers, the notes need to be more spread out. It's not a thing about guitar. It's not a thing about piano. It's a thing about physics. Uh, you, uh, you really can't hear the difference in the notes, uh, and they generate so much uh, overtone information. They generate so... The, the notes literally last longer. They, they're wobbling around the room for long. You're generating a ton of noise with, with close voicings. That's why, you know, most, uh, I think, pro guitar players won't play this as a G. They'll cut that note out. Because instead of, it's just, it opens up down there. Right? So on the low, if you're writing for orchestra, the, the low stuff, your tubas, your your trombones, uh, when they're playing lower, your uh, your upright bass, um, typically the intervals are pretty spread out. In other words, the bottom of the orchestra is playing power chords or maybe octaves, right? Just like guitar, because that's how physics works, right? So down at the bottom, typically your notes are spread out. Or if you, let's say I'm gonna do this. Like, right there, that's that's a wreck. But if I go here, because I'm cutting out some bass frequencies, right? Uh, and chances are I'm not going to add much to that. If that's in the mix, there's not going to be other instruments down there competing very much. So, um, so at the bottom of the register, typically you keep things spread out. Uh, obviously, if you find an example of something that sounds cool, if it sounds cool, it is cool, right? But in general, where you'll like things probably uh, is things are more spread out down low. Uh, in the middle register, they can be anything you want. They can be spread out. They can be close together. At the high register, typically they spread out again, right? So again, see it on piano. The wide, the wide voicings they work everywhere. They work, they work all right down low. They work great in the middle. Like everything works great in the middle. Up high, they work great. Close voicings only work in the middle. Right, and it's physics. It's not piano. Right. Um. Um. Uh. Oh, extensions. Oh. Oh. By the way, that's why most of the time people won't put a nine down too low, but you can. Um. You can get away with it. You just have to be crafty. But uh. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Um. So, uh, oh, extensions in, a, in the chords in a key, right? A one chord takes a just regular uh, 9, 11, 13, 2, 4, and 6. I'm, I'm just going to say 2, 4, and 6 for now. 9, 11, 13. Let's go with that. One chord takes, everything takes regular 9s, 11s, and 13s, except for the following. The two chord, sorry, not the two chord. Uh, the three chord takes a flat 9 and a flat 6. The four chord takes a sharp 11 or sharp 4. That's, that's what I should say, two, four, and six. So three chord takes a flat two and a flat six. Four chord takes a sharp four. Six chord takes a flat six. You got to memorize those three. Those three should be instant. Uh, the seven chord takes a, a flat six and a flat two, but, but you never really, I mean, I've never been asked to play extensions on a seven chord. Seven chords are pretty rare these days anyway. If you want to write with them, go for it. But, uh, I mean, they're, it's a great sound, but th those three, you got to memorize those three. So and that's one of the axioms that makes decision making in music uh, very, very uh, much better. So um, as guitar players, you should memorize the five cage shapes. You should be instantaneous with those. And I've, I'll, I've mentioned this before, but E, A and D have the same note order. Root five, root three, five, root. So root five root three five root root five root three five root root five root three. My uh, uh, I did a, a master's degree in something completely unrelated. Uh, the comp, the comprehensive e exams at the end of the master's degree are those are complete mothers, like where you're you're dealing with years of of material that you have to be very good with because especially in the oral portions that your interlocutors are going to be asking you a ton of questions about stuff. And, and it's really about, do you know this stuff or have you just memorized a bunch of crap? Well, um, I'm kind of a mix of, but I mean, in either case you have memorized it, but have you, as it, does it, do you get it? 
you know. But the memorization part, you know what I did? I made songs uh, for years of material, right? And it was just like, like just whatever. I made these recordings. I listened to the recordings in my car and I had that stuff nailed. I still remember some really random stuff from those things. Uh, that's been a while. Anyway, all right. So uh, the reason I'm saying is E, A, and D. Root five root three five root root five root three five root root five root three five root. Now root three root uh, root root three five root three root. I'm gonna pretend as if I, I'm gonna spell it the G like that because it's the same pattern as this. G and C have the same note order. So E D uh, E A and D have the same note order. The difference is you run out of strings, right? So root five root five root three five root root five root three five. No I'm out of strings. Root five root three. I'm out of strings, right? These two have the same note order as well. Root three five root three root root three five root three out of strings, right? Notice also another thing. The real reason you learn K. Okay, so you make a country song. Root five root three five root root five root three five root root three five root three root root three five root three root root three five root five. Oh, sorry, root five root three five root. Anyway, get what I mean? Memorize the note order in those three shapes because look, that's what you're basing everything else on. So I've got a I've got this shape. Um. What am I going to compare it to? I'm comparing it to this. The reason I know what these notes are is because I know this, right? Uh, I know that this is already a three because that's what's in here. Root three, five, root three, root, right? And this, here's my mystery note. Well, I know it's a two because I know that's a one. That's a root. So three, two, and I know this is a seven because here's five, six, seven, right? Therefore, that's a major nine. Root seven, th uh, nine, three, or root seven, two, three. Um, uh, it's 13. Why do I know that's a 13? Because this is my root. 7, 6, right? So, you, so much decision making on guitar is going to be based on your uh, knowledge of those five cage shapes. Um, notice another pattern. The, the, the cage shapes are basically, you know, if I have a root on the E string, right, I find I, I need a B flat something. I find a B flat here. If I go up, I use the E shape. If I go down, I use the G shape. Let's say I find a B flat here on the A string. If I go up, it's the A shape. In other words, you know, I've got this root. And if I want to go up, there it is, A shape. Go down, C shape. Uh, find a B flat here, and if I want to go up, it's a D shape. If I go down from it, it's just the E shape again, right? So check out an interesting pattern. You find your root on the E string. If you go up, it's the E shape. Anytime you go up, you use the shape that's the, the name of the string that you're on. So these these lessons have been less uh, less playing than the earlier lessons. But uh, so if on the E shape on the E string, if I'm going if I'm going up on the E string, it's the E shape. If I'm going up on the A string, it's the A shape. Up on the D string, it's the D shape. Right. So anytime you're going up from the root, it's the same, it's the shape that the string you're on, of the string you're on. So E string, E shape. A string, A shape. But if I'm going down, it's the C. If I'm going down on the E string, it's the G. Does that make sense? Uh, so, um, extensions in a chord, we talked about uh, in the chords in a key. Um, there's E and G on A. A and C. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Um, how to spot chord, uh, you should be able to look at a chart, at a chord chart, and, um, and be able to analyze it by number. You should be very good at that. I, I would say that starts with knowing the five chord of every key. So you look at, okay, okay. You look at a, you look at a, a group, at a chord, at a song. Let's assume it has three major chords in it, Right. So let's say let's assume it has it has uh, F B flat and C, right? That those are three major chords. I assume I know that that the three major chords are the one, four, and five. I just need to know which ones are which, right? Well, the two that are a whole step apart, in this case B flat and C, they eliminate each other. They must be the four and the five, 
leaving only F. I'm in the key of F, right? So you should be able to look at a chart and say, this is in the key of so-and-so, right? Find the three major chords. The two that are a whole step apart are four and five. So the leftover one is, is the one chord. Um, uh, and then, uh, now let's say there aren't three, you could find the three minor chords. This is, these aren't, uh, this, this rule won't be, uh, infallible. Yes. Would you like, come here, come here, come here. Come on. I'm going to get you. You're just going to open the door and close it. Come here. Let me. Do you have anything to add to what I'm talking about? Hmm? No. All right. Do you want to stand there while I'm working? All right. Um, so, uh, what were we saying? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, from there, it's, it's so presumably you also see one, four, and five now. You could look at the chart and say, okay, there's one, there's four, there's five, there's one, right? The fact that you see clearly the one and the five chords, I mean, if you see the one, you should be able to spot a, uh, a two pretty easily, right? That it's a whole step up from whatever your one is. And so when that G minor shows up, you're like, I know one is F, therefore that's two. Um, I know C is my five chord therefore that d minor that keeps showing up that's a six right you you should see them uh yes it's the fact that you know the one four and five will it splits up the octave well enough to where you'll quickly derive the two three and six right um you should practice that you should get chord charts in front uh chord charts in front of you and just name uh just sit there naming the numbers, right? The thing is, what'll happen is that that this the this method is more like training wheels. I mean, it gets you going. It gets you to where you can make these calculations pretty quickly. But the uh, the fact is, you'll see the same keys over and over and over, um, so often that you'll just you'll just have them all memorized. You'll get to where you just know them. So. Um, but let this be your training wheels. And the practice of riding your bike is sitting with a with a song in front of you with the chord names on it and just practice. Like whatever key you're in, you're just, you're rattling off what the numbers are as they go by. So, um, yeah. Those are axioms. Oh, the notes in a chord, in every chord. Um, wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, let me unplug this. It's, you know, this mic isn't turned on, right? You, you know that? Oh. Uh, here, let's... Here, let's not play with it. Get over here. What do you have to say to people? What do you what do you want to tell them from your years of life experience? Here. Man, he, he's usually pretty talkative. Um... This is not a good video. Don't drop it. Uh, it looked like that's what you were gonna do. It didn't seem like something you could. What? How's it going? What's your name? Come here. Can I interview you for my TV show? Come here. Can I, all right. What's your name? Hmm. Hmm. It's nice to meet you. Hmm. What do you have in your mouth? What are you eating? Hmm. That's weird. You some of your own body. Uh, what, do you have anything to say to people? What do you, what do you want to say? You want to tell them to stay in school? Um, I'm eating some peanuts. And there you have it, folks. He's eating some peanuts. All right. Who is this? Do you know who this is? It's me. Who is that? Marceline. Marceline, the vampire queen, right? Came with a comic book. Hey, do you know where the other Adventure Time characters are? Mm. Can you get them? Can you go find them? Mm -hmm. Will you get them and show them to people? Mm -hmm. All right. Here they come. All right. Uh, here, actually, there's one up here. Hold on. I'll show you. Ben. Finn looks down. I don't know if that's... Sorry about how disorienting this must be, but Finn looks down on the proceedings. Um... 
Oh, okay. All the notes in the all the notes in every chord. That seems very drastic, but but it turns out. I mean, I thought, oh, there's no way I need to do this, and it turns out I use it all the time. Okay, so we got Lady Rainicorn. Yep. All right. Who else? I think Lumpy Space Princess is up there where you can't reach. Do you want to get Jake? Jake's over here. Um, all all the chords in every all the notes in every chord. Sorry, this this uh, has ballooned uh, in size. This in length. Um, uh, all of the. Do you want to get Jake? Can you get Can you get Jake, or you want me to get him? I got him. All right. Are you you feel safe doing that? Okay, I'm gonna get to it eventually. All the notes in every chord. What, here's what you do: you memorize the notes in uh, start with just triads right the notes in the key of c so the c a c major chord is uh he's he's wearing finn's backpack somebody gave him finn's backpack but um, Dad, my wife made these what Dad, what here's the microphone the microphone is right here what's up um, um yeah you you need to don't don't play with it like you're going to drop it, okay? Don't drop it. Okay. Um, let's put him over there. Uh, okay, so... Uh, oh, you're going to get poked. Uh, okay, N memorize the notes in, in the key of C, right? So C major chord has C, E, G. A D minor has D, F, A. An E minor has E, G, B. Notice they're all natural notes. What you're doing is you're memorizing what the natural notes would make, right? So if I know a C is C, E, G, a C major is C, E, G, right? Then I know how to make it C minor, C, E flat, G. I'm just, you learn to bump them ha in half steps. So C, E flat, G would be minor, right? Uh, what's a C sharp minor? Well, it turns out you just bump the uh, the root in five toward the, the three. Learn to see it ge geometrically like that, but it starts with, uh, with, knowing that okay d f and a is a d minor chord d f a is a d minor chord what's a d flat major chord is d flat f the f would stay put right so if you want to see it so d f a d flat and then that would stay there and so in the root and five move together right that's usually what they'll do the root and fives are going to move together and threes will move or not so anyway does that make sense I, that was a very hasty uh explanation but memorize the notes in the key of c you can derive all the other ones very quickly from that and once again these are like training wheels over time you get to where you just have all the chords ultra memorized right adding the sevens to to those is quite easy because you're just thinking down a half or whole step from whatever your root is so yes what what okay uh that is one of my uh, one of my daughters colored that for me. Pretty sweet. It, it's, uh, she she's normally taped up to a a, a a corner bass trap, so she fell off. Um, yeah. Okay. So axioms, right? What all did we do? We said uh, B and C, E and F, seven and one, three and four, seven and one. The extensions in a key. I mean, uh, uh, the extensions on the chords in a key. Um, I'm saying all the notes in all the chords like we just said it. And the way you would do that is through memorizing what they are in the key of C. And then learning to shift the notes by half steps uh, mentally, right? One of the cool things about, about starting to think like that is I, I think okay. part of what happens when you okay. really start to master. Okay. Is this what happened to you? Um, okay. Okay. Um, um, one of the things that really starts to happen okay. is these abstract, these, the better you learn theory, these okay. intervals, the okay. distances between the notes, what music looks like in the abstract starts becoming this concrete geometry in your head. Like you can almost see it, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Is that how it happened to you? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really good preschool that he goes to. Um, and, and these really concrete, uh, uh, the, these abstract uh, distances between notes, distances, right? I mean, even to call them distances. The, uh, all right, all right, stop. Um, 
uh, it starts to become a very concrete thing for you. And uh, this is the first, this is a 30 minute video. Um, and then, oh, get get very good at looking at chord charts and being able to spot what numbers uh, everything is in the key. So, yes. Yes. Is that it? Do you have anything you want to add? Mm -hmm. What? Um, I like you. That's it. That's it. I love you too. Do you know that? I love yeah. you very much. Yeah. You know that I always will? No? Mm -hmm. Do you know that I always will love you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Good. All right. What a heartwarming. This was like an after school special. So, all right.